I got flashback Steven Strasburg on the team now. I need pitching bad. And this video was actually recorded a couple days ago, obviously, because David Price is still a diamond. And taking a look at flashba flashback Strasburg's stats a little bit. I was thinking about getting his base card. The I think his, his base live series is 93 at the moment. But the differences are that the base his base card has better stamina and better break. But his flashback card has better velocity. And I think he has a couple other stats that are better as well. So it was kind of even when you cancel out the better and worse stats. I just don't, man. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just really don't like having the base live series cards anymore. Because MLB has been fucking with my head. They have been fucking with, they have been trolling me the past couple weeks. Because um, a couple times I played with uh, diamond players and they went down. Or like when I got Barry Larkin, literally the day that I got Barry Larkin, Xander Bogarts went up to a diamond. So uh, that's not obviously a waste because I still use Barry Larkin. But David Price had the debut a couple days ago. And now he moved down to a 91 overall. So I'm sitting there like, what the fuck, bruh? I'm sitting there scratching my head like, how can you do this to me? I just picked up all the Red Sox players about a week, a week and a half, two weeks ago. And then now David Price goes down to a gold. So I don't even know how many stubs he's going for at the moment. But obviously way less than what he was going for when he was a diamond. So I'm like sitting there like, fuck, should I, even, should I get rid of this guy now? What should I even do? I need pitching, and I want to get pitching via flashback players, legends, anything but the live series cards because those fucking cards are pissing me off lately. No joke. Very much they are pissing me off. I'm looking at getting the flashback Felix Hernandez, the 97, all, uh, 97 overall Felix Hernandez. That card looks crazy. It was going for around 108,000 stubs when I saw it in the market about... A couple hours ago, I saw it in the market, and that was going for around 108000 When it first came out, I'm pretty sure, when the first time I noticed it, it was going for around, Jesus, 300,000 stubs, maybe even more. And I knew it was going to drop, obviously. But I don't know if it's going to drop even more again, 108000 if, if it's going to drop down to about 90000 or if it's going to go back up. So I don't know if I should wait, or I don't know if I should just go on a manhunt and start selling some guys start, you know, grinding out games, making some stubs, doing whatever I can to make stubs so I can get this guy. I don't even know what to do. So that's the guy I'm looking to get next, the 97 over, overall F Felix Hernandez. And I'm not really sure who else I'm looking to get because I really don't want to get guys that are like 23,000 stubs each, even though the flashback Strasburg was 20... I think, actually, I think he was around 30,000 when I got him, but I don't really want to go off and just spend 30000 20000 each. I just want to go crazy on one guy or a couple guys and spend a shitload of stubs and get crazy guys. Nolan Ryan would be somebody too I'd be looking to get. And I think the Astros roster, if you fill out the Astros roster, you get the 95 overall, uh, uh, 95 overall Nolan Ryan. And Jose Altuve is going for around 70000 I'm pretty sure at the moment. So that's not too bad. I think Correa is going for around 10,000, so you probably need around 80,000 stubs at least to fill out that roster at the moment. But anyway, getting into this game, the flashback Strasburg debut, I got the one to nothing lead, got off to that early lead after each throw hit that early triple in the first inning. Barry Larkin is getting picked off of first base. More base running mishaps are being made by myself. I may go down as the worst base runner to ever play the game soon because every video you see something stupid, some boneheaded mistake on the bases, and then Beltray just grounds over right after that to end the inning. So we're still in the third inning, though. Uh, flashback Strasburg was still doing work on the mound. Not really sure how many Ks he has up until this point, but he had a couple at least. And this guy had a pretty decent team. I kind of forget who his main players were, but he he did have uh, Carlos Gonzalez, I'm pretty sure. And he, he had most of his team, about eight out of the, or seven out of the nine guys he had in the lineup were gold players, at least I'm pretty sure. Look at Bogarts, man. I do not want to take that guy out of the starting lineup. I can't do it. He's been playing too good ever since he's been in the starting lineup. And I don't, it's kind of a piss off too, because... 
I don't know if I wasted my time grinding out innings with Twins players to get Rod Carew and then Bogarts. I put him in the lineup, and he has just been a man on a mission ever since I put him in the starting lineup. So, like I was saying before, I was kind of thinking about just rotating Bogarts and Carew at short or rotating Barry Larkin and Carew at second. But there's no chance I'm going to be rotating anybody with Barry Larkin or Bogarts at the moment because Barry Larkin and Bogarts are definitely the best hitters on the team the past couple games. And Barry Larkin has been the best hitter on the team since he's been on the fucking team. So there's no chance now I'm taking Barry Larkin out of the lineup. No chance in hell keeping that guy in the lineup. And then Bogarts, his debut, he went 3 for 4 with a home run. He's just been getting multiple hits a game ever since. So I can't see myself taking him out of the lineup either. Strasburg still getting some more K's, getting the second out of the inning, or the first out of the inning via the K. I got a 1-2 count. We are now in the bottom of the fourth, going to the curveball, down and away. He swings and misses at it, and then Fisk, what the hell was that, man? Literally, not, not the end of this game, I switched it up, but when I was grinding out more innings to get a certain player in Conquest, I switched up the fielding throwing back to button accuracy because I can't deal with just the standard buttons anymore. Too many throwing errors from people who shouldn't be making throwing errors, so all my future MLB videos will have the button accuracy back. I actually did used to use that, uh, but I, I switched it up. I figured when I got all these amazing players, why the hell would they ever make any throwing errors, but it does happen more than you think. And sometimes it can literally screw you over, especially in Conquest, man. I don't know if some people do what I do and just, just stack your team to the core with nine players, pitchers, pitcher included, with the team you want to get the player for. And then you just, yeah, you just grind out innings and Conquest. And if you're not using button accuracy, you literally lose 95% of your games from errors your fucking team makes. Throwing errors especially. It'll be the easiest ground ball to second base or something. And then your second baseman will fucking air mail it by a hundred feet. And I'll just be, it's like literally the biggest piss off ever. Because I can literally make that anybody. A fucking two year old toddler can make that throw blindfolded. And then you've got some you know silver card out on second base. And then they're air mailing the throw that should be made easily. But I don't know. I'm moving. All my future MLB videos are gonna have button accuracy back. Just a little heads up because I'm sick of people making throwing errors when they shouldn't. Bogarts is grounding out to end that inning. So now we are in the sixth. Strasburg is still doing work on the mound. I don't know how many hits I've given up up, up until this point. I think I only have one, maybe one or two. But then may I have? What is going on? Every video, the pitcher steps up to the plate for my opposing team and gets a hit. Every single video, the pitcher always gets a hit. So that is his second or third hit of the game. So this is a pretty decent outing from Strasburg at the moment. I didn't have Aroldis Chapman, I don't think, on the roster at this point. So I was I was thinking about putting... or I, If I did have Aroldis Chapman in the lineup, I probably would have put him in in the ninth inning if the game was pretty close. But as the game went on... It was just becoming more obvious that I should leave Strasburg in the game. Carlton Fisk is leading that inning off, getting a base hit off the pitcher, and then two batters later, who else but Barry Larkin is getting a single up the gut. Couldn't send Fisk home right there because he didn't have the best speed. Then Fielder is coming up after Beltre, and then he is just grounding out to end the inning right there. I'm pretty sure Beltre walked. That's why Fielder came up to the plate. But we are now in the seventh inning. And Strasburg is looking to do more work on the hill. Throwing that that heater down in the strike zone. So I'm going back up in the strike zone and getting yet another K on the board. I think I have about 9 or 10 at this point in the game. And then he is stepping up to the dish. Driving one up the gut for his possibly third or fourth hit of the game. So not that much. If I was going to start giving up hits, I probably would have put somebody in the pen warming up. But Strasburg was able to get out of it when this guy was getting on the board. He does get a hit, but then next batter, I am just getting via the ground out to Barry Larkin at second base. So yeah, this guy's only got three hits on the board, so Strasburg was probably going to go to the end of this game. Tony Gwynn has been MIA the past couple weeks. Some people might have noticed that. Tony Gwynn has been asleep at the plate for the past week or so, and then finally he's coming through with something clutch, getting some more insurance on the board 
which is always important going into the final innings of this game. Going into the bottom of the eighth now, I got the 3 nothing lead, and Strasburg still doing work on the mound, getting the first batter with the ground out to Barry Larkin at second base. 2-2 two -two count to this guy, chasing it up in the strike zone, the high fastball, he can't keep up with it. And then 1-2 count with two down, curveball down in a way, swinging and missing at that as well. Strasburg was reaching 100 on the gun this game, and I'm not sure how fast his base card throws, but like I said, I think the arm strength is better, and the velocity is better on his flashback card as well. I'm not sure, you know, if his curveball is better on his base card or anything. Like I said, I haven't used his base card or anything, but I'm, I'm just sick of the base cards anyway. Flashback Strasburg is still, yeah, this is the ninth inning now, as I wasn't able to get anything in the top of the ninth. First guy's trying to lay one down to get on the board, and then a little bit of a, that was a curveball away. He doesn't chase, so I'm going up in the strike zone. One, two count. I have over 100 pitches. I have actually had quite a few pitchers, pitches up until this point in the game, getting him on the high heat. So this guy is down to his last strike, last out of this game, just getting a ground out to Bogarts, and then flashback Strasburg walks away, getting the player of the game for once, for once, Barry Larkin doesn't get player of the game, that guy has been hogging the player of the game category for the past couple games, but I'm keeping flashback Strasburg, he was actually probably one of the best and my most favorite pitchers using since I've gotten them 13 K's in the debut. That is not too shabby for Strasburg right there.